What's up guys, Tyra Bear here. The absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Apparently the other day on TMZ, Paul Rodriguez came out as being a closet Trump supporter, which I don't really know what closet that would be because Everybody I knew already knew that Paul Rodriguez was a Trump supporter. I know that one of my friends that's toured with him quite a bit and is in Korea with him now, Gene Pompa, had mentioned that a long time ago and even publicly on Facebook. So I don't really know that that was a revelation at all. What got me though was I looked at the comments and I saw the first comment was like, uh, oh, well, there goes your career. Well, you never had one anyway. And there were a couple of comments that were similar to that. And here's the deal. I get it when people get tired of other people and they feel like those people aren't deserving of the position that they have or had, but you can't take away that certain people have done certain things. Like in the 80s, 90s, Paul Rodriguez had a really big comedy career. That's just what it was. Freddie Prince had just died and then afterwards came Paul Rodriguez's show, which I can't remember the name of it. And then he also, I think, produced uh, born in East LA and he was also in born in East LA and then he like he had a string of actual movies and it wasn't like he was not a successful comic just he ran his course and I don't really know how long you can sustain that type of comedy because to be honest Paul Rodriguez when he was really booming was a lot of stereotypes. I remember specifically people in my family didn't really like him because he did a lot of stuff that was just stereotypically Mexican and they felt like that was making us look bad. Mario Lopez was on the show and he mentioned that his own mother had didn't necessarily like it or agree with it, just, you know, you gotta get that check, which I don't blame Mario Lopez at all. That's the way this business worked and especially back then. But Mario Lopez definitely didn't mention it, how, you know, they'd be throwing tortillas and stuff like that and it was just so stereotypical and bad. As far as Paul Rodriguez goes though, I will tell you just being 100% honest, I'm not really a fan of his personally and that's because when I was younger I got that people in my family didn't support what he did or weren't really fans but they would tune in because the thing when you're Latino a lot of times you'll support things just because your people are actually being represented on TV, which wasn't something that happened a lot. Now we have more representation as far as Latinos on TV, but when I was growing up, we just didn't have that many. So uh, Paul Rodriguez, when he had his show, we would watch it every week, even though uh, we, my parents didn't necessarily, I was too young to have a stance on that. When I was a kid, I didn't know anything about it. I just remembered, that he was, and I know some people get mad at the looks like me type of thing, but he was my skin color and I knew that he was Mexican American as well. And so I w remember as a kid that I liked him. So when that happens, it sticks in your head, you know, and I was really into watching stand up when I was a young kid. It wasn't normal, but it's what it was. I was really into watching stand up when I was a kid. And so I remember every time I would see him on a show that I would just feel like there's our guy, you know, and he was the only one for a long time. And then he introduced the Latino Kings of Comedy, which was George Lopez, Alex Ramundo, Joey Medina, and Paul Rodriguez. And so he did that. And that is kind of where, a part of where George Lopez got a lot of his like, you know, his start as far as the mainstream goes. Alex Raimundo, still a working comic out there. You know, he has definitely had some success. He's a really good guy. And then there was uh, Joey Medina, who's personally helped me out quite a bit. Just a, a really, you know, a really good guy. But yeah, me and Joey have gotten into it about politics, though, to be 100% honest. Even not too long ago, but I still like him. He's, he's my friend, so I'm not going to say anything bad about Joey Medina because Joey Medina, even though we don't agree on everything, I will tell you is a good friend. But what I was going to say about Paul Rodriguez is he's one that really let me down because, like I said, when I was younger, I always felt like that's our guy, you know, and then 
when I first started doing comedy, I remember one night him and George Lopez both showed up at the Laugh Factory. So they both show up at the Laugh Factory and you know, I'm super excited cause I'm new and it's Latino night and I'm hanging out and I feel like, you know, cause I did the show earlier. I was one of the guest sets. When you're a guest set, you go up at the very beginning of the show. And like I said, this is when I was new. And so I was so excited to see George Lopez and Paul Rodriguez. George Lopez still had a show going at the time. And the thing with George Lopez is he came in with security and you couldn't get close to him or anything like that, which I'm not one for trying to get close to people anyway. I was just glad to see him. But, uh, so, you know, he did a set and that was really fun and then Paul Rodriguez shows up at the end of the night and he does a set and since I was so new I was like I'm not gonna bug this person because Paul Rodriguez didn't have security or anything you know he was just by himself and I remember thinking to myself I'm not gonna bug him I'm new there's nothing he wants to hear from me I kept my mouth shut whatever whatever so a couple years later, a friend of mine asked him if he's ever heard of me because a friend of mine was working with him. And his response is, hey, I heard he steals jokes, which I have a reputation for being a little bit of an asshole sometimes, but I definitely am not known as a joke thief and that's just not what I do. But I still was like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and let this go and just chalk it up to maybe he got me confused with somebody else. So then when I still had the silicone in my face at one point we were on the Laugh Factory show and it, well I was on the Laugh Factory show and then he just dropped in which the Laugh Factory is one of his home clubs he's really good friends with Jamie Masada the owner of the Laugh Factory and I've been a regular there for several years now and I was there to do one of the shows. So I do my show and like I said at the time I still had the silicone in my face so there was like a ball of silicone right here. And then on the other side, it was a lot fuller too. And so uh, I get off stage and I had had a really good set, but I get off stage and then I walk out and, cause you know, I walked out to go smoke a cigarette and Paul Rodriguez was after me, which I didn't know. I never paid attention at that time to who was going up after me. I just knew that I had to have a cigarette after I got off stage. So, you know, that was the way I worked. Uh, that was the way I would decompress. So I'd go outside immediately after, have a cigarette. So that's what I did. I went outside to have my cigarette and then somebody came out and was like yeah did you know that Paul Rodriguez just said you look like quagmire on stage and then I was like no I didn't know that and then um, but I was like you know it's not the nicest thing to say but I still was like whatever in my head you know I'm still cool we're comics and so I'm not gonna make a big deal of that but I didn't get to meet him that night and I was fine with that you know I went ahead and left and to tell you the truth, I was kind of like now I'm a lot more thick skinned about that kind of stuff. But at that time, I really was uh, a little bit like my feelings were hurt just because I was like, well, I didn't say anything derogatory about Paul Rodriguez or really anybody else. And if you know what my stand up is, I, I do make fun of a lot of situations, but I'm not a person who goes on personal attacks. It's just not what I do but you know whatever i still was just like not visibly tripping like i said i was internally i was disappointed but visibly i was just like whatever cut to a couple years later i do gabriel iglesias's uh, stand-up revolution on comedy central and then later on i get booked to do the comedy festival, the Stand Up Revolution Comedy Festival, which Gabriel Iglesias ended up having here in Tempe, Arizona. I was living in LA at the time and I go to do the festival and Paul Rodriguez is one of the headliners. And I was doing this thing where I was gonna get this shirt signed for Gabriel just cause Gabriel was really good to me. And it's like, Gabriel is the kind of person that has so much money that you can't really buy him anything, you know? Like, I guess you could, but you can't really buy him anything and, you know, have that really mean a lot in the way that it's just like, yeah, he's got a shitload of money. He makes millions of dollars, so he's not really worried about your dumb little gift. But one thing I thought I could do for him was I could get the shirt signed by everybody that was actually on the festival and then present that to him at a later time. So I got all the names except for Carlos Alizraki, which I was like, I'll get him later. And then I was down to Paul Rodriguez. But Paul 
Paul Rodriguez was going to headline. And I knew that he had said the quagmire thing about me, and I knew he had said the joke thing, thief about, thing about me, but I still was like, this man has not officially met me. Let me not judge him. Let me just be an adult about this. We're in the same business. He was one of the people that I looked up to when I was younger. Let me meet him with an open mind this first time that I meet him. So I attempt to, uh, well, I go to the back and he just finished performing, you know, just got off stage. And I knew that that would be a good time, you know, for me to ask him if he could sign the shirt. Anyway, I say his name a couple of times. He ignores me, but I'm still thinking maybe he just didn't hear me. It's kind of loud, but really it wasn't loud. It was me just giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I was like, maybe he didn't hear me. It's kind of loud. So I say his name again, even louder. And he gives me a look like he's really annoyed and like, I heard you type of look. And then he walks out of the area, the green room area that we're in, or the wings is technically where it was. And I just remember thinking, this is why they say you should never meet your heroes. And it's not like Paul Rodriguez was really a hero of mine because I already had developed enough of a comedy taste even by the time I got into my late teens, early 20s to know that he wasn't doing anything particularly good or groundbreaking. It just was kind of stereotypical, I'm a Mexican stuff. So it was, it was just like that memory of being like, I remember this guy and I feel like he did something for Latinos in comedy and I would have liked to have been able to respect that and say, hey, this is the influence you had on me as a young Latino and here I am now and I appreciate you for at least kicking down that door, kind of, you know, helping to push it open. I don't know that he necessarily kicked it open, kicked it down, you know, but he definitely helped open it. Uh, he loosened the lock. He jiggled the knob. He did, you know, he did something. And, and I'm not trying to be insulting about him. And I do still respect that he did do certain things. And that's why I say with these people, it's like these people are mad at him just because he said the Donald Trump thing. And I'm a person who has a personal story where I can say that he's been shitty with me a couple of times. I never have him giving me the chance of at least meeting me. But still, I have to acknowledge that he did do something. So I guess my point is, even when you don't like somebody, even when you have been let down by somebody, you still can't take away their accolades from them and act like they did absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter how much they piss you off. And so that's my point of this one, I guess. Anyway, please like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. <laughs>